Today on the Bluffton News, we've got a preview of Bluffton Bobcat football. And, well, you've heard the checks in the mail. This time, the food is in the mail. It's all coming up on the Bluffton News. Welcome to the Bluffton News. I'm Annalisa Itkor, and we have a lot to cover, business, entertainment, and of course, the latest local news. But first, let's start with Bluffton's current headlines. This past Tuesday, House lawmakers postponed a vote that could give local governments the power to outlaw golf carts on streets and roads. If the proposal is enacted as is, more than 6,200 golf cart permit holders in Buford and Jasper counties, including more than 4,000 in Sun City, could be affected. That's if the local government leaders deem golf carts to be unsafe for some or all of the roadways where they are currently permitted. On Tuesday, Republican Stephen Goldfinch, the lawmaker who introduced the controversial amendment, acknowledged the objections and said he was trying to find a compromise. Bills must clear their original chamber and be sent to the opposite one by May 1st, the crossover day deadline, or face tough odds of becoming a law this year. Bluffton's Don Ryan Center for Innovation just turned one year old and they have definite reason to celebrate. After one year in operation, the public-private project between the town and Clemson University has 10 innovators, a handful of investors, and room to grow. The center was the vision of the late Don Ryan, president and CEO of CareCore National. As the center's director, Jordan Berliner's goal for the first year included finding innovators and coaching them into becoming successful businesses. He also worked to find investors, private organizations to sponsor the center, and resources to help the innovators. In the second year, Berliner plans to build on the success, bringing in additional appropriate innovators, securing funding, and building on the list of available resources. The road to Columbus, Georgia for the NAIA National Softball Championship will go through Hardyville. The University of South Carolina Beaufort was selected Tuesday as one of 10 host sites for the inaugural NAIA Softball National Championship opening round. The 10th ranked Sand Sharks will host three visiting teams in the opening round from May 13th through the 15th with the winner of the double elimination tournament advancing to the NAIA National Championship. Being selected as a host school means the Sand Sharks will have the opportunity to play at Richard Gray Sports Complex, where they have enjoyed a tremendous home field advantage. Bluftonian Lisa Nelson needs your vote. Lisa, who is no rookie when it comes to winning cooking contests, including Bluffton today's annual holiday cookie contest, has made it through the first cut in the pasta category of Johnsonville Sausages Tourney of Taste contest. Lisa's recipe for Creole sausage pasta is, on, is one of the final eight recipes. Public online voting will determine the four finalists and a grand prize winner. The four finalists will have their names, photograph, and recipes published in a Taste of Home magazine or cookbook with the grand prize winner receiving an all expenses paid trip for two to Reader's Digest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin to tour the Taste of Home test kitchen and have lunch with the Taste of Home editor. The fifth former Hardyville city official was arraigned Monday at the Beaufort County Courthouse after being indicted in March for misconduct in office, including the abuse of leave cashing policy. Randall Shane Haynes, former city manager, appeared for his arraignment pleading not guilty and, given, and was given a $15,000 personal recognizance bond. Haynes' arraignment was set for a separate date because he was coming from Alabama and since he voluntarily surrendered, it was routine to accommodate the person's schedule. For more information on these headlines and more, please check out the media sources you see listed on your screen. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Coming up, B.J. Fraser of the Bluffton Sun has the details on the stories that have everyone talking as the Bluffton News brings you hot off the presses. And Shelley West Hodges brings us the Bluffton Business Report. Welcome to Brown Golf, where playing here has its rewards. Purchase a 20-round package of golf prior to May 1st, 2013, and receive a full day with yours truly. That's 18 holes of golf, two-hour mini school, and lunch. To purchase that package, go to browngolfmanagement.com. That's browngolfmanagement.com.
www.golfcourseinc.com. Now, let's go humble the golf course. Welcome back to the Bluffton News. Today on Hot Off the Presses, B.J. Frazier joins us from the Bluffton Sun. So, B.J., it's been an interesting week in Bluffton. In my opinion, very good news for non-smokers. Tell us what's going on. Well, uh, Beaufort County Commissioner Gary Kubik wants to ban uh, smoking from all grounds and facilities uh, that the county has uh, for all his employees. Now, it's important to stress that residents will still be able to smoke on the grounds and, and around the facilities, but he wants it a total ban on all their property. Right now, they cannot smoke in the building, but he claims that you know the uh, the health risk to non-smokers and and so forth and more healthier lifestyles. And also, it's interesting. He notes that the cut down between tensions be between his employees. I guess maybe somebody's not having a smoke and somebody doesn't want to see it. You know, so. We, Good luck to him, and uh, you know, hopefully, it will result in healthier lifestyles for all of us. Hey, I think you know personally, I think it's a great idea. I come out here from Los Angeles, where we've had no smoking in public facilities for many, 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 many That's years. Right. And hey, Los Angeles is still there, so maybe it'll work here in Hilton Head. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So moving on, uh, you and I we're on camera every week, and we're kind of used to it, but not everybody is that comfortable with it. And there's apparently a camera at an intersection in Bluffton that has everybody talking. What's that about? Well, you know, Big Brother's watching us, um, <laughs> and there are currently, or recently, four cameras were installed on top of uh, very tall poles at the intersection of Buck Island Road and US 278. And they're not cameras at all, they're actually sensors. And, and what they're replacing is, you know when you pull up to a stoplight, and usually the, they have uh, cuts in the concrete with wires that tell the traffic signals when to change? These are going to eliminate that, so it will eliminate any kind of damage that may happen and traffic snarls and heavy replacements. These sensors will see the cars coming and tell the lights when to change. So a good improvement, and uh, they're in four other locations in Beaufort County, and we'll see a lot more of it as time goes on. Oh, I think that's such a great mm -hmm. thing for 278 in general, where you've got those really long lights, and sometimes right. you're just waiting forever. All Same right, so this you. past weekend, Earth Day celebration yep. in Old Town Bluffton. We had a great time at that. Mm -hmm. And I understand that there's some efforts moving forward to protect our recycling efforts. Sure. Well, everybody has an old monitor or computer. I know I got a couple in my office. We've been thinking about ways to get rid of And of course, they're illegal to put into uh, landfills. So on Saturday, May 11th from 9 to 3 in two locations, one in Bluffton, one in Beaufort, there's going to be an electronic recycling day where you can bring those monitors and old TVs. You know, I got an old black and white uh, that I'm dying to get rid of, and that's where you should bring them, and it's, of course, free. And at the same time, bring your old tax records or anything else you want shredded, because they're going to have shredding, too. I'll tell you, that's what I did. At the last time they had this recycling event, mm -hmm. I got rid of boxes of old documents that I just didn't need anymore, but I wasn't right. real comfortable just throwing them in the trash. Absolutely. And for more details on the whole recycling on May 11th, Pick up this week's Bluffton Sun. Hey, thanks so much, BJ. Thank you. We're going to head on out now to Shelly West Hodges for our Bluffton Business Report. She's joined by Al Stokes from the Waddell Maricultural Center. Hi, I'm here today at the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, Waddell Mariculture Center. And here with me is Al Stokes, the manager of the facility. Al, tell us a little bit about what you do here at the Waddell Mariculture Center. Well, we're developing technology for farming seafood, and we have an, an interesting seafood project going on right now with a researcher from Brazil working with us on a polyculture system, working with uh, shrimp and oysters and fish all in the same system. We're also developing techniques for spawning fish and producing them for recreational fishermen. Uh, we just finished stocking out three ponds with striped bass so we can rebuild the striped bass population in Charleston Harbor. Uh, we're also working with local fishermen and we're going to be working tournaments to capture some cobia and we'll spawn those and produce some cobia to release back into the wild uh, this spring. And then we'll follow that up with uh, producing some spotted sea trout in the summer and then the, towards the end of the year, we'll be producing some red drum and, and stocking those about it, uh, and out in some of our estuaries. 
Okay, now Al, so really the mission of this center is to really uh, monitor our indig indigenous, I can't even say it, indigenous species here in the area and kind of help them if there's a depletion. Am I correct in saying that? Uh, yes, uh, these are uh, really important fish here. They're uh, important to the state's economy. Re recreational fishermen spend a lot of money going fishing. Oh, yeah. We need to make sure we have a healthy fish population. And so we're developing those tools to rebuild stocks if they're overfished or they're harmed by bad weather or, or storms and things like that. So these are great tools to have to rebuild these populations of fish, and that's what we're doing. Okay, well, y'all do a great, this is a great facility, and, and what a great thing that really is needed. Now, tell us what your needs are and what business folks and individuals out there can do for you here at Waddell. Well, one of the things we're doing outside of our mission with the department is we're trying to have some great uh, educational programs for young people. Uh, we have some college students coming in. We're going to be funding uh, some interns. We've had them from all over the United States. And uh, we've had some donations from the public to help us support those programs because uh, federal funding that supported those programs in the past has gone away. We also support high school students. Uh, two of our winners last year will be going to international competition in Phoenix. Uh, we have a lot of young people coming in uh, on tours and things like that, and that's not supported by the, by the agency. And so we accept donations uh, from the, that are made out to the Waddell Fund through the Community Foundation of the Low Country that supports our interns and educational programs. And then we also use some of those dollars to buy equipment that we could not normally afford. Okay. Now, if, if anybody wants to get in touch with Waddell and make a donation because they are in need here, uh, how would they go about doing that, Al? They can give us a call or they can call the uh, Community Foundation of the Low Country, and it's also set up on their website, uh, the Waddell Fund, and that's a great way of helping us. Well, thank you, Al, for all that you do. And once again, also, they are open for tours here, so if you'd like to set up a tour, you can also call Waddell, and that's back to you. Great, Shelley. Thanks. When we return, Coach Ken Cribb will join us with a little preview of Bobcat football season, and Lily Coleman will be here to tell us how we can lend a hand to Bluffton self-help. Have you noticed all of the people, activity, construction, and new business on Buckwalter Parkway? Buckwalter Place is a 94-acre knowledge-based, mixed-use, new town development in Bluffton, South Carolina, and is the focus and nexus of a significant amount of economic, commercial, governmental, educational, entertainment, social, and cultural activity in Southern Beaufort County. If you haven't already, visit Buckwalter Place and experience it for yourself. Buckwalter Place. Live well. Connected. Welcome back to the Bluffton News. I'm delighted to welcome Coach Ken Cribb. He's the head football coach for Bluffton High School. Now, Coach, the Bobcats had such a tremendous season last year. And even though right now we're kind of neck deep in baseball and all kinds of spring sports, it's never too early to look ahead. Do you think the Bobcats can have the same type of season next year as they did this past year? Well, we're, we're real excited about the coming season, especially getting started this Wednesday with spring football. Uh, we're graduating 16 starters, which seems like a lot, you know, high number. But uh, our, all our kids have been in our program for the last three years, and uh, we're real excited about who we have stepping in, and actually feel like we can be as good or better than we've been so far. Now, what has been the biggest change in the program? Probably the the uh, year-round um, mentality, working year-round, our weight room, the addition of Coach Tommy Adams with our strength program. Um, our kids are bigger and stronger and faster than ever. Uh, they're dedicated and they, 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 work, they train year-round for football at the same time while they're still playing other sports. A lot of the kids, most of the basketball team were all football players and a lot of the baseball players, uh, lacrosse, soccer. So uh, our kids still play multiple sports, but uh, they, they train physically year-round. My nephew's a high school football player and it, I'm always so impressed with his dedication because even when he comes down here on vacation, he is in the gym training and staying prepared for football. So it's great to hear that your kids have that same attitude. Now, tell us a little bit about the influx of college recruiters that have just been bombarding the Bobcats. It's been, it's really been, life's been crazy. <laughs> um, every day we'll have several college recruiters come through the school. Um, you know, of course, they're recruiting KJ Ford. He's has some offers, uh, biggest offers from NC State. 
But our sophomore, Shamik Blackshear, 15 years old, he's already been invited to play in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl in San Antonio, Texas in 2015. And he has offers from Florida State, Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina, Clemson, North Carolina, North Carolina State, um, uh, Central Florida. Charlie Taft just left school just a few minutes ago. But um, with, with uh, uh, Shamik being so highly recruited and uh, KJ being recruited and some of our other kids, we have a lot of kids being recruited uh, every day, all day long, we have recruiters coming by the school. We, uh, we have 14 of our players from last year's team going off to play college football. And uh, this year we're looking for another big signing class. Wow. Well, speaking of this coming year, you do have a lot of newcomers coming in. Which newcomers do you think are going to make the biggest impact? We're excited about you know a lot of our kids, but uh, probably some of the ones that's going to make the biggest impact is uh, quarterback, sophomore quarterback Alex Davis. He'll be a junior. He brings a new element to the game. CJ was you know most efficient passer I've ever coached in my career. Um, Alex also has this very strong arm, but he also is a very fast runner, very strong kid. So the running element from the quarterback position is going to give us a new look. Same time we have Jack Ernie, who will take over our kicking duties. He's also our wide receiver tight end. Uh, Jack's a, a soft rising junior, 6'5", six, six, 210 pounds. We look for him to make a big impact. And then on the other side of the ball, we have a uh, rising sophomore, TJ Ferguson, who's going to step in and help um, at linebacker position along with Michael Myrick, who's also uh, will be a senior, will be a three-year, uh, fourth, fourth year in our program. So, well, uh, it sounds like you're going to have a really strong team. Now, real quick, tell us a little bit about the spring game and what Bobcat fans can expect. Well, spring game is always a lot of fun and a lot, way too competitive. So uh, <laughs> kids are really excited. They want to know who's on, who, who's on what team. Um, we'll start this Wednesday on May 1st, and we'll go three consecutive weeks, and our spring game will be on May 7th, Friday, May 17th. Um, it'll be a fun night, looking to have a fundraiser with um, having some uh, uh, dinner that night at the game. And uh, just excited for the whole community to come out and see what 2013 is going to look like come fall. Well, it's going to be very exciting. Coach, thank you so much for bringing us this Bobcat update. Thanks so much for having us. Joining us now is Lily Coleman from Bluffton Self-Help. And Lily, I know you're here to talk about a very important effort that you always undertake each spring, and that's the U.S. Postal Food Drive. Tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, it's actually a national program, and in Bluffton, Bluffton Self-Help is the lucky agency that gets all the non-perishable foods that's collected. So we're real excited. It's a very important event for us. Well, and it's the kind of event that makes it really easy for people to lend a helping hand. Tell us how it works. Well, it's very easy. On May 11th, Saturday, early in the morning, put out a bag of groceries. It's pasta and cans, and put the cans at the bottom and the pasta on the top. And other items like that, peanut butter, uh, rice, um, items like that that are non-perishables, leave it at the mailbox. And the wonderful letter carriers in Bluffton actually pick it up when they drop off your mail and they put it in their truck and then they bring it over to Bluffton Self-Help. Now, why is this so important for Bluffton Self-Help? Well, it's really the biggest thing that we rely on to, to stock our pantry. Um, last year, uh, we, were, we were a little bit less than the year before. The year before, we received so much that we were able to last until well into the holidays. And then last year, the event didn't go as well, and we ended up having to purchase food, which we don't like to do. Well, we've, we've heard a lot lately about how programs like yours, the cupboards have been a little bit bare because there's much more of a demand on your needs right now. Uh, but how much has been collected in the past? Um, about 30,000 pounds were collected um, in 2011. So and it's hard to imagine cupboards being bare. What do you do with all that food? Well, we have about 2,000 canned items that go out every week. So when the uh, clients come for di uh, four different food distributions, they take 16 to 20 pounds of food out um, of the building. So um, we have about 1,800 people with swipe cards, which is a way that they come in and get their food, and it goes very quickly. Okay. Now, what are you guys preparing for the day of the event? What's that going to be like? Well, it's going to be kind of nice because we're going to, we really want to thank our uh, postal workers in Bluffton that are working so hard. Um, we collect food at the annex out by Sin Sun City. And then we also collect the food at our building, uh, 39 Sheridan Park Circle. 
and we actually cook uh, hot dogs and provide chips and beverages to the male postal workers as they pull up. We have volunteers unloading the truck. It's a pretty active day. I'll bet it is. Well, I know. Let's tell everybody the date again. Okay, it's Saturday, May 11th, and if you can't make it Saturday, you can come to the farmer's market on May 9th. We'll have a table. You can drop off your bag there, and it'll count toward the drive. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us, Lily. Thank you very much. How's the air temp at your house? Hotter? Colder? Never fear, season seven at Covert Air is now underway. If your home is not in the comfort zone, we can be on the scene today. Clean a little coal, find a little leaf. If it's over the hill, replace it. Summer's coming, have no worries. Sit back, relax, and stay cool. Covert Air to the rescue. Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Welcome back. We're going to head on out to Kim Viljack now, who's going to tell us all about the Earth Day celebration with this week's entertainment reports. I'm here with Teresa Wade from Experience Green, and it is a gorgeous day here in Bluffton. Teresa, tell us about this great event that you've organized. Yes, we are very excited to be hosting the third annual Earth Day celebration here in Old Town Bluffton after the May River cleanup this morning, which is a first time collaboration for Experience Green with the town of Bluffton, as well as Carson Cottages. We've got activities for everybody today and great food. We've got obstacle course, yoga, kids crafts. This is a zero waste event, which means our event won't be creating any waste to impact the environment. And it's just a great day to come out and have fun in Bluffton and celebrate our natural environment. Mike Bennett, also known as Recycle Michael with I2 Recycle. And Mike, tell us what you're doing out here for us at this event. Well, I own I2 Recycle, which is a recycled waste management and consulting company. And what we're doing is providing a zero waste option for events in the area. And what we do is we set up waste stations out here where we collect compostables and food waste. We got glass, cans, paper, and plastic. And that way we can collect all of the, the waste provided and actually recycle it. What people don't, don't realize is that most of everything that they produce is recyclable. It's just a matter of having the uh, facilities and the, the operation to do it. And so that's what we provide. We have an upcycle program where we take, it's a uh, charitable contribution to Experience Green, where we take number six plastic cups, mm -hmm. laptops, cell phones, um, dairy containers, and uh, you know the Capri Sun aluminum sure. pouches? We collect those and then the upcycle company that does it, Ter TerraCycle, will uh, send money to certain nonprofits. I'm here with Amy Blackenship and she's with Petal and Juice and Matthew and this is the coolest thing ever. Tell us more about this, Amy. Uh, this is a green mobile smoothie company. Um, you hop on one of our bikes, we provide the ingredients, you pedal and you make your own smoothie. It takes about two to three minutes to make your own smoothie. We do festivals, parties, school functions, employee health fairs. Well, it, it is absolutely neat looking, and Matthew is doing a fantastic job here on the bicycle. Is it pretty easy to do? Is it like riding a bike? It's pretty easy. Yeah. Okay, well, here's the true test. We're going to have to taste it out. How is it? It tastes delicious. Ah, we have a winner. Back to you. Thanks for joining us for the news program. That is all Bluffton all the time. I'm Annalisa Itkor for the Bluffton News. We'll see you next time.